Hello and welcome to Smash Riding. I am your host, Justin. This is Holly Parrot. Holly Parrot, say hello for a cracker. I am the other host. <laughs> that does not, that does not sound like a parrot. We talked about this. No. You no, agree? Not. You agree? No. <laughs> I'm still mad at you because you did not give me anything for Christmas. That's you don't deserve anything. <laughs> I'm give you a beating if that's what you want. <laughs> Welcome to another exciting episode of Smash Writing. I don't know about exciting. It's it's an episode. <laughs> I, I like to think positive of the show. Thank you very much. Can you have some positivity? It's kind of a positive that 2021 will probably not be as good as people think it is. <laughs> well, I mean, already it sounds like it could be good. Optimist. Optimist. Yeah. Today we are talking about the films of 2021 that we are looking for forward to the most at watching. These are not These, rankings, obviously, because we don't we haven't watched them. Well, you say that. I've, I've got my rank because I, I actually follow through. <laughs> These are I show that extra distance. You know? mm, yeah. We, these are movies, obviously, that we're, we're going to review, but we're looking forward to uh, basically watching them. It, 2020 was a boring year. And you might actually recognize some of these movies somewhere, what we're excited for 2020 for. Yeah, these were a part of our 2020 review list, but... I could use the same thumbnail. <laughs> Good uh, I'll, job. <laughs> I'll go first uh, this time. Uh, my One of the films I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to is Coming to America, which is the sequel to Coming to America. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. You want to take that over? <laughs> no, no. That's the actual title, except the title is going to be different because instead of using the word T-O, it's going to be two. Okay. Like the number, part two. Um, well, at least it won't confuse you. <laughs> it won't confuse anybody once they physically see it. This, uh, Eddie Murphy was gold in the 80s and late in the late 90s. Since then, he's kind of fell off. So I think... Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a good film. I'm not. It's not piqued my interest because it's, it's going to be a good film, like per se. It's piqued my interest because it could be really, really bad, and it could just cement the idea that Eddie Murphy's time is kind of less over. And and I, I'm not the biggest fan of making sequels of properties that were a hit 30 years ago, unless it's. A good I, script is a good script. I'm yeah, if, if it's the right thing, I just think they would almost be better at rebooting this film, remaking it with a new no, actor. No, you don't remake this. I, I just don't know if Eddie Murphy will get it done this time around. Uh, he's. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But it piqued my interest because of that idea alone. Like, what Eddie Murphy are we going to get? Are we going to get the 80s Eddie Murphy or are we going to get, like, Pluto Nash? <laughs> That's always a question with Eddie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but this is one of his biggest films of all time. So I'm curious to see what they do in coming to America. You're an idiot. <laughs> I'm going to power through the first couple of mine, like just a few words about them, because they're kind of the bottom of the barrel ones for uh, Jungle Cruise. I, I laughed. I didn't think much of it until I watched the trailer, but that trailer I really definitely thought that was has like... me excited for it. When I seen that trailer, I thought it was like literally Jumanji like it, it, it looks fantastic. I mean, then some of the lines in that trailer, but he's like, you won't find anyone cheaper. <laughs> like how desperate he got when she says, we have money. And he's like, I'm in. It's like, yes, <laughs> bring me this movie. I'm ready for Jungle Cruise. I've been ready for Jungle Cruise since 2019. That's one of the repeats. Really? Yeah. They were set to come out in 2019? Mm, they are set in 2020. All right, uh, my next one, number nine, it's always a callback, is like when I see these type of films, it brings back the kid days, but you just hope it's good. Tom and Jerry, uh, the movie. I've got so much reservation for this, but I shouldn't. They, uh, they rebooted the Animaniacs and they're great. So, so I mean, they can do Tom and Jerry. So this is a... The, I, I believe this is actually the first live action of Tom and Jerry. Oh, is this going to be live action? Yeah. Oh, I take it back. <laughs> yeah, it's... I take it back. I'm not... No. Not at all. I'm not excited for this anymore. Not, not even, like, hopes. Like, the, 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 the movie's going to be live action, but Tom and Jerry are not going to... are going to be their cartoon characters. Okay, okay, alright. So think of, like, Sonic. It wasn't like they put a real animal in. 
it was All right. CGI. Now, when you said live action, that's what I thought. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's now live different. action and CGI characters. Um, would this be the first film? I'm kind of, I've seen the trailer. It's piqued my interest because it's Tom and Jerry and it's the first film to do it. So, I'm... If they have Spike up, so I'll be back. But if they don't have Spike, I don't know if I'm gonna I, I don't... The first trailer, I don't think, revealed too much, but... I didn't even know there was a trailer. You, you didn't even know there was a Tom and Jerry. No, I knew there was a Tom and Jerry movie. Yeah, I, I you just didn't, didn't know it was live action. Yeah, CGI. I didn't know it was live action CGI. I, I knew there was a Tom and Jerry. They showed the cartoon picture of it. That's why I figured it was a cartoon. Nah, it's, it's live action. So it... It got my attention because of being Tom Jerry, so I can't wait to see what it's like. It's coming on HBO Max, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, my next up is uh, it's still this power through Army of the Dead. Uh, for all the crap we give Zack Snyder for being terrible at DC movies because he should not be touching comic book movies, he is excellent at the horror genre. Yes. His heavy handed on the gore and just Letting all the mature aspects are perfect for the horror genre. He should never leave it. He should stay there forever. Army of the Dead. And Dave Bautista thrown in there. Yep. Yes. What, so what is Army of the Dead about? Uh, by the looks of it, well, I think I remember from reading a little bit about it. Because I want to go and as blind as possible. Like they got a squad of people who are going to be raiding Las Vegas for supplies or something. Okay. The Sea of the Dead. Hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Give me, like, this is where Zach should stay. <laughs> well, Dawn of the Dead was one of the best horror remakes of all time. Yes. And it was because of Zack Snyder's directing. Yes. He knows how to handle these movies. He sh which why like there's nothing wrong with it. Like that's his genre. He should stay there. And I will always enjoy another of his films, um, Three Hundred, which was God, that movie's actually so much more boring than you remember it. I own one and two. Why would you buy the second one? Evergreen. Good mm. lord. <laughs> now, it... <laughs> no, you know, it, again, much like Zach, you can watch it one time and get a little bit of enjoyment out of it, but try watching it again. I'm, I'm always big into Greek mythology, so... It's know. not real, though. Like, they made... The, the, the Spartans were! No, the Spartans were, but that event in the movie is I'm all all exaggerated. I have to exaggerate. You want to say like you're hey, in the history? I am Sparta. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's like, I'm big into history. That's why I love the Pearl Harbor movie. No, the one historical good. event surrounded 10 tons of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go with my number eight is uh, Morbius. Um, Jared Leto. I can't get excited for Jared Leto. I can't do it. <laughs> I think there's only been one trailer. I, uh, oh, no. I saw the trailer. You did see the I trailer? I did see the trailer. And no? No. It, I'm giving this film a chance because of Venom. They made Venom work, and why not try it with another villain? Because Hardy is better than Leto? Yes, <laughs> yes, that is 100% true. I mean, like you... But we sit here and preach all the time that you have to... Give them a chance, yes. Yes, so it's on there because of past it, I got, I'll watch it. I'm going to watch Morbius. It just gets a lot harder when you remember Leto's performance as Joker. That's a different character, different people, different direction. But the way he sinks into the character may be the wrong direction for him. Maybe just try acting instead of being. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it works. But like. it, it, it piqued my interest because of past merits, and that's why I am giving it a shot. Uh, hopefully, and, well, no, because, crap, that's Sony. So, uh, hopefully. Yeah, I was going to say, you were going to say the MCU. No, that's wrong. No, I was going to say HBO Max for sure, but that's Sony, so they're not going to be on. Um, you know what? If they would make it R, I'd be, have a better time with it. I, I don't know if it is. That's not... Of course. All right. I wish I doubt it. That, that's my number eight. All right, my number eight again from through the, until I get to number five. Uh, Candyman. It didn't make my list last year. It made my list this year. I want it to be good. I do too. I, I really do. want Candyman to be good. I think it will be. I hope so. <laughs> well, no, I don't want to get my hopes up for it. 
Because it can't, the Candyman is one of those movies that can go anyway. Yeah. I, mean, I hope it's good. First one was legendary. I might be the only person who's going to say I liked the part two and three better. I, I like, like two. I like one. Two made sense. One was good, but... One, one was random one. until you watched two. Two was like it made more sense because of the slavery issue and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, one. The, the, well, it was always there, but yeah. Uh, two and three just like they wouldn't talk to each other. Like they each had different ways he died and when he was a human. Three, I think the most I hate about three is because of the, the significant time jump. Like it, it literally caught me off guard when I first time I ever watched that film, or a couple times I watched the film that. Like they, that they, was the, the the lead character was the girl, his great 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 granddaughter, which makes it more creepy because he's always like, "Be mine, be mine." That's your dude, family. You're, you're, you're not. I don't think he's talking about it in a sexual. Well, location. it looks sexual. But uh, the, the problem with the sequels of Candyman is that it turned it from like a significant story plot to just a regular hack and slash. Yeah, like the the. The third one focused like, oh, you kill him now by his paintings. And he was an artist, right? And Yeah. Okay. Um, but, like, the source of his powers in part two was the mirror that his his lover had of him. And that, okay, he destroyed. Now, I don't like when you keep adding to his power. And I guess that kind of just kind of threw it off to me. But this is not a reboot. No, it's a sequel to, what, the first one? Yeah. Like, the, the something about... Um, they go back, this is now follow the boy from the first film that helped the lead character. It's more about him trying to basically deal with the aftermath of the events of the first film. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's still a seek, it's, it's not something to be under Candyman 4, it's just Candyman, but it would technically be 4, but a direct sequel to 1. Yeah. So, confusing. See, this, is, this is why I keep bashing Halloween, because we're going to see more of this happen. Yeah, I know. Uh, my next one is, I'm a big Daniel Craig, James Bond fan. One of us has to be. <laughs> yes. No Time to Die is set to be the last Daniel Craig 007 film. Um, I loved every one. Of course, the, the, the biggest one is number three with Skyfall. This one I'm hoping can match up to that because uh, four uh, kind of was kind of like going down a little bit. They tried to top it off, but I believe this is five. Um, no Time to Die is set to be his last one. Now James Bond at this point is like basically I think retired and they bring him back and there is somebody, and this could be a good transition film. This is what really piqued my interest because there's the whole issues of who's the next 007? Who's the next James Bond? This film kind of makes it clear that the 007 is an agent title, so you can go Well, that's on. always been... Right, but it's associated with James Bond, like that's his number. In reality, 07 can be passed on to somebody else when the old 07 gives it up. There is a rumor in a brief period of the film that there is a character who is the new 007. Well, didn't they come out and say that that was not true, though? No, it's, it's still... Or is it's, that just a continuous <clears throat> rumor that people keep saying that this is the new James Bond and it's... Yeah, they're they're comparing they're making James Bond and 007 two different entries. They saying, okay, who's gonna be the next James Bond? But then there's the other element, like, no, there's the 007 that we See, want to move on from. This is gonna be the problem where they try to do something like this. It's gonna to try to outsmart itself to the point it's gonna fall in on itself. Right. And but says I'm curious to see how the Daniel Craig James Bond ends. Um, and this, this, that's why I got my peak interest. So that's, that's my number. I'm trying to pierce Brosnan to save this franchise. Oh God, no, he killed Pierce the is franchise. the best. He killed Pierce it. is number one. No, he killed the franchise. Pierce is number one. That's why they had to reboot it. You know, when you think 007, you think GoldenEye. Not Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan, the video game. Gold. Go on. Uh, my number seven is uh, <laughs> Chang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. It's my only MCU. Uh, oh yeah, top ten, We're at, wow. Which is weird, but to be fair, like of course you're gonna expect stuff like Black Widow is going to be good and everything. 
Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings is another one of those out there movies. The Internals were coming like, too in 21, but I have no hope for it. Like, uh, I don't want to carry too much for him. But, uh, <laughs> Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings feels like that Guardian of the Galaxy is an Ant-Man all over again. Like they're pulling something obscure from the hat. Can they deliver? I hope so. And I'm excited to see if they do, what they do with this. Because I know nothing about this. At all. N not from the comic books. No, I know do nothing I, I never about even this. heard of it until this was on the MCU, MCU slate. And it, it, was, it could be, I mean, this sounds like an Iron Fist thing. It could be a new way to introduce an Iron Fist. Which we know the fans are craving for. Yeah. Mm. But that's it. That's it. Uh, sticking with the Marvel theme, basically, as he just mentioned, Black Widow, that's on everybody's list. I I am not a fan of everybody should get their um their solo film. You know, you know Widow has been one that people have been wanting for yeah, so long. Yeah, and I feel like she should have got this movie first be before Captain Marvel. It was she was more established. Yeah, but you needed Captain Marvel's power. Understandable, but as I say, this movie now takes place before uh, Endgame and all that, so nice to see. I hope this is the goodbye role, keep the character retired now. No, I don't see this being goodbye at all. She's not going anywhere. But they can't, unless they bring her back from the dead. These you can drop her into um, the Scarlet Witch show. Yeah, or or do if this movie is a blowout, make it a Black Widow too, because there is timelines. Uh, I don't want to start doing timeline things, man, because I know you'll get people. When's Robert Downey coming back? And yeah, leave let him it alone, leave go. Him let it let that go. So I mean, but I hope this is at least the the send off that. You know, unfortunately, I maybe this would have been nice if this was back in 2013 where they could have done sequels and give her stories, but I hope this is a good send-off. I think it's going to be a good send-off. Um, I was... This was one of the first films I think came out that they were postponing it. And I was disappointed because we were like we like a month literally counting down. We were, I was excited and then it was like postpone, postpone, postpone. Um, I believe this is still being released in the theaters. Um, it's still going to be a wait and see. However, if it isn't, they're going to do what they did with Mulan. Mulan, if. Well, hopefully not, because I'm not paying 30 bucks for this movie. <laughs> no, on, on Disney Plus, it was $9.99. It was $9.99? Yeah. Oh, uh, I thought it was 30 No, no, other streaming services were jacked uh, prices up. Right. But, like, when Mulan came out, it was $9.99. I just don't feel like I should pay for it, but that's my opinion. But go on. Um, my number six. It's going to come down to, like, almost one sentence here for this movie. No. The Matrix 4. God. The Matrix 4 is either going to be Insta Classic or Death. That's it. I'm predicting. There's not, I don't see any middle road for Matrix 4. I'm predicting. And either way, I'm on board for it. Let's see what happens. It's either going to be Death or it's going to be great. <laughs> I'm for it. It's Death. Let's go. Three Except ended the series, we, people. We don't have a Mr. Anderson. A, like, um, not Mr. Anderson, uh, Mr. Smith. How are we doing this without Hugo Weaving? Why do even we he thought this? it was stupid. Keanu was like, why don't I just do it for the money? He doesn't need the money. Hey! He's just coming off of the Wick series and Bill and Ted money. He and, does not need the honestly, money. Honestly, remember when, this, when these films were originally said they were supposed to go head to head with each other. John Wick 4 and Major yeah. 4. We, think, we won't get that back. No, but uh, honestly... The Matrix 4, looking forward to it. Uh, Need the money. What is wrong? No, I wanted the think? money. Wanted what? the money. For what? He doesn't need the money. There's no need to do a Matrix 4. You don't know what's going to happen in the Matrix 4. Oh, uh, yeah, we can't wait for the trailer. I'm going to spoil the shit out of get that. Uh, it's I'm, gonna, it's a I'm saying you the, every single trailer. You don't have to. It's Warner. They'll ruin it <laughs> themselves. <laughs> All right, uh... My next one, once again, is... Yeah, Matrix 4 is going to be on HBO Max. Uh, Kong, Go, uh, Godzilla vs. King Kong. Now... <laughs> that's all it is. Just two giant monsters smacking off each other. Maybe so, but <laughs> I did enjoy how they... When the films first came out, 
like Godzilla in 2014, it was a separate entrance. Okay. When King Kong, uh, the remake came out, which they called Skull Island, it threw in a low-key jab. And you were like, wait a minute. That those these the, the monster's name is getting thrown in there. Why is that? And then it's revealed uh, in Godzilla King of Monsters, which I actually enjoyed. Um, yeah, you might be one of the only like. There's a couple people I've seen give a good praise for, but not a lot of people did. The visuals were nice. Um, the action was good. The, the rest is not relevant. When you got Godzilla, there's really not much to, to go on, but. I'm curious to see what they're going to use to why these two are going to duke it out. I guess maybe it has to do with... No, I think one's going to be a challenger later and to cut a promo on the other and it's, get it's, out in my ring. And yeah, it's going to be like a WWE style. Godzilla will come <laughs> running in there with the big clock going, but I can't see Zilla. <laughs> <laughs> but I was looking forward to this even before, and I remember talking to you about this like last year. I'm like, I don't want them to rush this movie to come out because they rushed the first three films. And if this is truly the final film in this series. Prolonged, I mean, like, build, do a build up. Like you don't. These movies aren't really rushed in the way you're thinking. They have so, especially Godzilla, it has so few. Well, I recording mean, for real people that you can finish. Well, that I mean, like, in like this film was this then, this film was set to come out like literally <clears throat> a year after King of Monsters. And I felt like if this was going to be a, f if this is truly the final film in this in this series. Well, wasn't this one of the movies that got pushed back from this year? Yeah, it was. It got pushed back like three different times, even before the pandemic. And finally, it's set for where it's at because the whole HBO thing, which will be a later discussion. No, that's a discussion we already had. <laughs> yes, that is true. We did so. Listen to that one too. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So that that's. Godzilla vs. King Kong. I'm at number five. Is up uh, the Kingsman, the King's Men. Yeah. Um, prequel. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Normally, I don't like prequels. Then you just jar it up for no reason. Yeah. Like make a sequel or don't do any. But they actually but, had they had something going on here. I mean, they. Yeah. There's like, a story to it. The Kings. I love the first like the Kingsman Circle mm -hmm. and the sequel to that. Like, um, I don't think it was the Kingsman Circle, but. The first two were really fun movies. The second one, not as much fun as the first, but it was still a pretty good movie. Just a little too long at times. And that's probably what happened. Because they, they, it's something about the numbers weren't quite there as they wanted it to be. Yeah. But sometimes but when you do the same exact thing, yeah. it, it waters it down a little bit. But I am looking forward. And I love the trailer for it. I love the fact that you take it back into the war and you're seeing the birth less, of this organization. Less, not very high tech, just simple. Well, it looks like it's still going to be high-tech, but it's going to be kind of like a high-tech for the era kind of deal. Which makes sense, because they do kind of get, a lot of these movies, they do kind of go overboard with certain technologies. You're just like, calm that down. Well, no, these movies are supposed to be about the tech, though. That's what makes it fun to watch these spy movies. Okay, I will go now. Another, the next one, Fast and Furious 9. I don't know if I want to watch it for all the good, all the right reasons, or all the wrong reasons. I. It's got to be the wrong reasons. I mean. I, I think at this point, like. You know, though, they do. So, they make so much money. It's uh, it's mind boggling how much money the Fast and Furious series makes. It's crazy because when you think back, way back in, I think the first film came out in 2000. Yeah, in 2000. It was just about bad guys and racing. And you were okay with that. And I don't know, like, is this the movie where they're in space? Or is no. it 10? No, that might be 10. I think it's 9. No, like, I thought I They're going to be in space. I... Like, oh, I can't by the time they got, like, By the time they got to, like, I think the last one that made logical <laughs> sense was 5. No. Which one did you think made last logical sense? 3? Tokyo, really? Well, in five they were pulling a bank vault, man. Well, what four was want? pretty simple. They were they were just using cars to out. A race. four didn't make sense either. Like at the end, like you see the charger being crushed in the tunnel, but then he's back in the. I don't know if it's in the charger, but you see the cross that was buried in the tunnel. Well, <laughs> well, Han freaking died. Why, in three. Would they, why would Paul Walker be an FBI agent again after everything he'd done? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, well this uh, one now has... That's, that's also the one where Vin caught the engine. With one arm, he caught the engine on the chain. <laughs> this is... So, Fast 9 is also where... First off, John Cena is going to be in it about the long He's lost... He's brother. Yeah, ba baby brother or older brother? Oh, sweet Jesus, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Well, since The Rock and, and Vince Diesel is feuding, they needed another muscle to come in. So John Cena would be the most logical choice. I think Cena can do it. I think I, I'm, I'm going to be interested in one, Cena's character. He needs to be a villain. He is. He, oh, he has to, No, I mean forever. Oh. Yeah, I mean, for the next five years, Cena needs to be a villain. In this one, he's the villain. Now, I hope they don't kind of like turn it villain, good guy crap. So, cause That's just, what they do. It's my family. It's what? family. All uh, about the family. But I'm also going to see how stupid and unrealistic the stunts are. I know in the trailer... They're going to be floating around Mars in this movie. It's yeah, basically. Be... <laughs> but in this one... they drift he's... off a crater in the moon. <laughs> well, Bounce this one, off did the Hubble any... telescope did and you... back into Earth's gravity. Did you see any trailers for this one? No. no so the one scene, yeah, he's chasing it. after John Cena's character. And, and John Cena cuts... like It's an old bridge, so it's like one you can cut. And Dom just dies off, and he prays for a hell mirror to hook onto the fe uh, the bridge and drives up the cliff. Oh, <laughs> I mean, in Hobbs and Shaw, we saw the Rock holding a helicopter and a tow line. So, but at least they made that more fun. Yeah. I mean, it. You knew they were going to just go way overboard, but Fast Nine, see what happens. Yeah, you're, you're gonna see it. Drift off the Hubble telescope, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's ten, get it right. <laughs> Say it with me. Say it with me. Number four. Mortal, Mortal Kombat! Oh, uh, I don't even... I don't know any of the actors in this movie. Does it I know need nothing to know? about the director in this movie. Does it I need don't to? care. They already said hard R rating. Fatality deaths. No CGI. I'm sold. Absolutely. Right, no There's like nothing. I think they said there's a lot of practical effects. Like, yes. Oh, if you this... get some of those Japanese actors from the action movies, it's just gonna be such a Remember, hard Remember, like, last year, down we, movie. We, re we reviewed the original. Yes. We loved it. Uh, this might overtake that. I think it will. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to watch this Couple movie. weeks. HBO Max. Oh, I'll go to the theater before I get HBO Max. <laughs> They're coming over here. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm honestly... It blew my mind, honestly, that I forgot that it was actually coming out this year. Yeah. Until, literally, I was making my notes, and I'm like, holy crap, I forgot all about that. I want to know if they're going to have the song. they got to have the song. I think they're going to do everything they, right. Like, buy the song. they got to have it. Like, I, I think they're honestly doing going to be doing everything right with this with that film, so... I'm looking forward to that. Um, this is for the horror fans. The Conjuring has been a franchise that almost helped save the horror uh, genre the last couple of uh, last past decade. Now I want to say every movie that has come out, minus like Annabelle, the first one, the the main series, The Conjuring. Gives you a good story. Gives you a good jump scare. Uh, I've never actually watched them still. I still gotta sit down and watch them. There's so many Conjuring that's been watched now. There's... This is the third one. Well, that, that's um, just a Conjuring Sorry, I, I, put, I put four on my cue card, but it's actually third one. And there's so many just spin-offs to the Conjuring. The spin-offs, yeah, kind of... Like, you almost forget, like, the second one uh, was so long ago now because they they went away from that to give the give the main series a break but you forgot how good these movies are the next film is called the conjuring the devil made me do it the the story of leading up to is still remains seriously they said it's not like the first two so are they going to introduce new demons new hauntings whatever they need to they need to resupply they're going to punch a bunch of characters back into it so we get five more spin-offs of the series this Outside, like you know, I, I don't even. I say that like it's a bad thing. It's not. The first, Honestly, an, the first Annabelle the film. The first Annabelle film I did not like. I thought it was cheesy and everything. Since then, the spin-offs actually have been not on the same quality, but they they been yeah. pretty good. But you know what though? Like if you can they built the universe. There's nothing wrong with the universe building. No, 
Uh, every once in a while, it'd be nice to throw some of the Conjuring characters in these spinoffs just to make it a little oh, but but yeah, the Conjuring, the Devil made me do it. Uh, like I said, I poured on on my board four. It's actually three because two's been so long ago you forgot. So the Devil made me do it. Good horror film. Uh, this is my horror film. No, another one of the horror films. I got a lot more than I thought on there. Did we see the first one? Don't breathe too. Or you talking about Don't Breathe? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Okay. That was a fantastic movie. Yes. Mine is a sequel. Don't Breathe 2. <laughs> uh, don't Breathe is one of those movies that came out of nowhere. Yep. Like, it was on the list and everything. I was going to go see it just because it looked kind of good. Like, these people trying to... It was fresh. Like, they're being... I don't know if they're being tormented by the blind guy or they're trying to avoid the blind guy. No, they were trying to and rob the blind guy. Yeah. Then he caught then, on. And then you had that twist them. of him keeping someone captive in the basement. Like, jeez. Yeah, you felt but sorry for him. Until the end, like, and then they flipped it, like, oh, like oh, everything, no. Everything you, you were, you're like, you were rooting for those people to die, and, and like, no, he's a blind guy, don't do it. Then you learn he was twisted. Yeah, he was so much worse. Now, this one has, is, uh, Stephen Lang gave an interview, he said that this is a, this is a stand run. It has nothing to do with the first one. It's going to be its own thing, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with in this next one. So it's like it's an indirect sequel. Yeah. It's a sequel because it's part of the franchise. Yeah. With the same lead character. I I mean yeah that was a good film so I I hope they don't botch anything in in the sequel. Yeah. Because I thought they they killed him. Well no he was kind of wasn't he watching her in the subway or the uh, train oh, station. Oh yeah that's right. Or they just made it unless it's like a effect here. Um, I don't know, misremembering that he was in the subway, but I'm pretty sure he oh, the train station. Okay. I'm pretty sure he was in the train station. Alright, let's go to mine. And it's funny because I literally spoke about this sometimes along uh, doing a sequel to a franchise is, uh, that's been dormant is a bad thing, but this one's a little bit different. This hasn't been dormant. We just had a, sequel, a reboot not too long ago. Yeah. Um, which I, I'm probably going to do a, a review on that one to give it a... a we already did. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, this film is the part three that we always wanted. Ghostbusters Afterlife. The trailer... Uh, you're being really subjective on all of us really wanted. Okay. This might have been a sequel that... I like the Ghostbusters, but uh, I'm not quite the soul. I we'll think see. when the woman version came out, the <clears throat> reboot, people weren't happy because they threw in the original characters as a side cameos. In this film, it's supposed to be passing up the torch type of deal. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to see, yeah, we will never get, you know, part three with the original crew because obviously we know why. Um, and the time has passed for that. So this is could be the closest I, to a part three. I'll say that teaser trailer came out of nowhere. With the, the lights coming from the garage and the flap coming up and seeing the Echo 1. Yeah. That came out of nowhere and that was a big hit, but... I want to be, I want to be excited for Ghostbusters 3, but... We will see. Uh, they're going to be walking that tightrope a little bit more than normal. Giving giving it a shot, I mean... Like I said, I, I, I didn't think there was nothing bad with the woman's one. I just thought the fan base kind of bashed it for... It could have been... Could have been better, but yeah. they, they bashed it for... Like, they could have just been a group in, like, Seattle or something, or... A branch. Miami yeah. branch, who are looking yeah. up to the Miami, the New York... I, I think that was probably... Because you did have a lot of laughable... Uh, you had talent there that was funny. Yeah. You know, you, all four of those women are very funny. No, uh, I would say all four of them were very funny. Like, let's say half of them were funny. Okay. And then I, Chris Hemworth's playing the... <laughs> The receptionist was a highlight. The, he was that he brought that, so over the top, and that brought out a new side of his. Probably saved his career, to be honest with you. I, he went a little too far toward the end with the dancing thing, but but that's Ghostbusters. What is your number two? My number two is was my I think it was my number one from last year. Uh, it's got to be Bob's Burgers. <laughs> You've been craving for this. I've been craving since I've heard that they were making this movie. I've been craving this movie. <laughs> I love Bob's Burgers. I'm all for them doing a movie. I just can't wait for it. Get here already. Come on. If any movie could have gone to streaming service this year, it was Bob's Burgers. Disney Plus. 
Now they own Fox. They do own Fox now. So yeah. you coming. know this film's your film's coming. It's just whether or when it's going getting here. Yeah. God. <laughs> my my number one um, stars one of your favorite actors as the the co lead uh, character Carnage. I don't I don't dislike him. I just don't think he's right for this. Role. I am talking about Venom Two. Let there be Carnage. This film we seen uh, the. Post credit scene. I I must didn't even go to the first one because it was like oh. My God. Once again, this film was going to um, this piqued my interest because of past merits. Uh, Venom was a sleeper hit. Yeah, I don't really think was anybody like it. really was going to give it a chance. Now it's, this is a little bit different. Um, one of the comic book's favorite characters, Carnage. You are a big. You have the biggest issues with. This. My, my biggest issues is I think Woody Harrelson's. Someone that they should have gone with. Can he do the role? Yes. Do I think he's 10, 15, 20 years too old to play this role? 25, 30. I, I'm not saying that he can't do this role. I mean, we've seen he's a cinematic thing. It's not like he's out there actually doing these things. I just think this could have gone to someone else and you could have built someone else for this character. <clears throat> it would have been better. But I am looking. I want to see this movie. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, me too. Tom Hardy's... <clears throat> Eddie Brock was great. Yeah, and he's phenomenal. As giving well, and giving I'm excited it a, for it, giving it a full chance. Um, I do think, like I said this before with Venom, they proved me wrong. So maybe they can prove me wrong again. This one really has to be R. Like you're talking carnage here. I mean, this character kills dining rooms full of people because the news got his name wrong. Uh, we shall see. Um, the, I, but I am, I like, hesitantly waiting for Venom Two. And we shall see how it goes. So, what is your number one? My number one is almost a shocker compared to how much I, how little I think of the first one. <laughs> uh, the Suicide Squad. That is my number one movie. The, Wasn't more, the, the first film was just Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad, yeah. They, they didn't have the. In no, they didn't have the. They added the. <laughs> I hate when they. That, that goes back to when we were talking about Fast and Furious. Part one was called The Fast and the Furious. And four was called Fast and Furious. You took out the. the. It. Mm, the but villain. The Suicide Squad. The things that are making this movie are like James Gunn. I love Margot Robbie as Harley. We've got just such an assortment of. B-level villainry coming into this, and I'm so excited for it. Like you got like one is like powers is like a weasel, and you have John Cena coming in as like anti Captain America. I forgot. I like it's been so long since I heard anything about. I forgot he was even going to be in that. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's already getting a spin-off show. Like they he, like the studio liked it so much already that they're giving them a show. His, his, his stock in the film industry has grown pretty fast now. Yeah. So, I mean, that's I mean, good I'm, for him. Uh, the Suicide Squad is my number one. Easy. I think it's going to blow away all our expectations. I can't wait for it. Bring it. I think it's coming like December, so it's a long wait. <laughs> really? I think. That's what wow. the, the, one, the one misleading lying list told me. I had to redo my whole list because they lied to me about so many. You got to check his sources. Um... But that's the time we have for today. 2020 is finally over. Have a